right. So um, obviously I shared um, with everybody this morning uh, an email with a link to the Google Drive folder with all of the stuff that we have from other um, bodies in town that, that have gone through this process. Um, and Melissa uh, graciously, and thank you, Melissa, uh, put together a draft of the procedures um, based on you know some of the templates or some of the examples that have already been put together. Um, probably easiest just to go right into that draft um, Want me to pull it up on the screen? Uh, we, Let's yeah, see. sure. Why not? Okay. I don't need to look at all you guys. No offense. <laughs> I know what all of you look like. I know some people prefer to see everyone, and some people like to see the documents. So it's up to you guys. But that's perfect. Okay. I think this will be more more efficient for us. Um, you know. Uh, Starting at the beginning, obviously, the purpose, we put together um, a, a more succinct mission statement some time ago. This is the original um, mission that the Board of Selectmen put together when they established the Town Technology Task Force. Um, the thing that I noticed with the purpose was Melissa, in your comments, um, I think there was another version somewhere on the drive, but um, yeah, it's and it's here. It's 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 I I put it into this folder, into the root of this folder, so that they're both there. Um, you talk about um, the composition of the group. Um, and we could technically use the, the the mission statement that we have, the current one that we're we're you know that I think we're using, has some uh, some breakouts. So we could technically use that um, if we wanted to try and uh, shape the composition of the group based on areas of focus. Um, you know, because your second question in the doc was, do we want to create specific slots with certain qualifications? Mm -hmm. um, so if that was something we wanted to do, we technically have a little bit of a roadmap there. So that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. um, if you open the, the link, Melissa, to the Google Drive, mm -hmm. um, the, I'm sorry, the, the root of the drive has our mission in it, right? So the, the Sinsbury Task Force Google Share has the, the mission and the original mission statement. Um, the, you know, I I, uh, I personally think we should use the one that you know we we adopted as a group, um, and I believe we presented that to the board of selectmen. This was years ago. Um, you know, the, the mission as it reads on the one that the group worked on was to assist the town in developing and maintaining a comprehensive technology platform and services strategy. The strategy will focus on improving services for our citizens, businesses, and town employees. The technology task force will work with citizens, town employees, and other entities as needed to evaluate existing IT services, processes, and infrastructure in order to make cost conscious recommendations to maintain and enhance existing products and services and to integrate emerging technologies as appropriate. It, it, they're very similar. There's, there's some nuance in there. This one, right? That's it. Right, and then the focus areas, you know, um, like I said, there's technically we could use that somewhat as as a uh, a way to shape if if we wanted to the membership but you know I, I uh, don't have a really strong feeling on uh, trying to I don't want to pigeonhole ourselves into all right well we want these types of folks and then not be able to find them um, so that would be my concern with trying to define um, specific roles and, and qualifications. 
but I know I'm jump, jumping around a little bit. Does anybody else have any thoughts on the, on the mission? Well, we could just reference the mission statement in the other document or, or add it as an appendix. Are you are you are we worried that um, if we change the mission statement, we have to go through some sort of formal agreement if we include that in the um, in the uh, sorry the official document? You know, I, I mean, I'm being completely inarticulate. I'm just saying, are we are we are we, are we, gonna, are we gonna wish we didn't get this specific? Is that kind of what you're saying about the focus areas? Yeah, you know, um, I, I don't have a problem with the focus areas. I just in looking at Melissa's draft. Yeah. The purpose, which to me is our mission, right? Well, we have, and we worked on a, a, a different mission than the original one that we were tasked with from the Board of Selectmen. Yeah. So for me, uh, for consistency, I would want to use our mission. Um, you know, because like I said, we, 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 we invested a fair amount of time pulling that together mm -hmm. um, and thought it, represented us and what we were trying to accomplish mm -hmm. you know i don't want to rewrite this thing or rework it and i don't want to overthink it either you know this was supposed to be a simple simple uh, guidance document and the areas that we were to focus on i guess the question is whether you think the mission statement is still applies today i think it i think this is good i, I mean and if if you're all in agreement and then when we talk to the yeah. full board about full task force about it if they're in agreement then i think we simply keep this piece as the purpose um, yeah. in mm -hmm. the other document yeah for me it's consistency right if this is what we're saying our mission is this is what i'd want the purpose of the draft or the rules of procedure to be yeah i agree with that i guess what i was trying to say is if we get if we decide that our mission changes in the in the future, is it going to be harder to change it because we have to go back and change this document too? If our mission does change, you know, obviously this is a guiding document; it yeah. would have to change with it. And you know, the the purpose statement on the rules of procedures, you know, and and where I would see us, you know, the the mission is really broad, right? I mean, it 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 covers mm -hmm. anything and everything that we're trying to do as citizens in the town and and you know, volunteers in town. The focus areas were, were, would be where the areas might, where we might manipulate this document. And we're not even including that in the, in the document. So I think we're all right with it. Those are really good though. I like those focus areas. It, yeah, it was just, you know, we were trying to figure out what we were supposed to do and, and this is what we landed on. Yeah. Good. Okay. So we can plan to just, I mean, I can even do that. On yeah, the just copy it and dump it in there and let's yeah. move on. <laughs> cool. I don't know how to do this any other way. So I'm just going to go line by line. Sorry. And hopefully I'm, we're efficient and we don't burn a lot of people's time because I want to be sensitive to that too. No, and thank you all for making a daytime meeting. This is and I'll polish it up later but is it still a temporary committee it is defined as a temporary committee so when the board of selectmen meets at their organizational meeting um, in odd years or every two years following their election um, they appoint a member to each of all of our many boards and commissions and the way they're grouped. This one is defined as, as temporary because it doesn't show up, you know, in an ordinance in the charter, it's one that's created by the board of selectmen. So that's okay. technically how they define it. Okay. Um, let's move on to the effective date. I mean, I, I don't know what else. Oh, yeah. Standard language. Right. Um, all right. Anybody have any strong feelings on what's there? All right, moving on. Um, composition and voting. Um, in the past, I think we've had as many as 
10 or 11 members. Um, you know, I, I don't have a, a strong feeling um, towards a, a, a specific number. Um, you know, I, I, I tend to be inclusive. So the more, and I think the more people we can get involved, the, the potentially the better the solution is. The other challenge with that is it's more personalities and more, uh, more uh, potentials for conflict and, and all of that fun stuff, you know, but eight, 10, 11, it, it doesn't make a much, much of a difference. I don't see it, you know, impacting our, our, our group all that much. Well, how many are there now? There's eight right now. Can you say at least? Right. Or a range of eight to 12 or something like that. We're uh, trying to, we're trying to get away from that. I mean, the, I think the board will want to see a, a specific amount. Um, I know it, doing a range offers more flexibility, but um, that kind of makes it challenging, especially when you're dealing with quorum issues. And that's the other thing I'd say about the only other challenge of a bigger group is that in order to get a quorum, you need more people. But um, Well, we've had, um, we've been blessed with not having issues filling, <clears throat> um, filling roles within our group. Um, and we've had a very diverse group. Um, so, you know, eight, nine, 10, I think we're safe in that area. Um, and, and, you know, I know, um, you know, we have somebody who are waiting for the board of selectmen to approve that would bring us to nine. Um, and, you know, uh, there were definitely some other folks that were, uh, that I've had conversations with. Um, that would be interested in joining the group. So I, I don't think I don't think we're ever really going to have a lot of trouble filling, you know, ten spots. And you have good attendance too. I'll say that for your group, you're very um, your meetings are always well attended, which is awesome. Yeah. So you know, a quorum of five is generally pretty easy for us to do um, if we wanted half of our members there to meet the meet the quorum requirement if, if the group was of 10. I was thinking in that group nine and like that with that five number as being the, you know, majority that we needed. So. But that, uh, that leaves Matt Ledestri hanging in the wind um, <laughs> yeah. without membership. Um, and Jeremy Perlman, who, um, Wendy had uh, had talked to and introduced to the group and he had shown some interest in joining. Um, you know, it, it just, you know, like I said, I know there's folks out there that would, would want to join the group um, and not a bad thing to have somebody in the wings if somebody did decide to step away. Um, yeah, I, I know Matt very well and he's, he is really, a, would be a good, uh, a good member. So you can make it a bigger number, but you don't have to have all the seats filled, right? Technically, yes. Yeah, this would be a maximum, right? I mean, it'd be a an ideal number. Well, <laughs> the maximum, right? It's going to be. The... But would that throw off the quorum? Like Melissa said, they need to have a finite number to figure the quorum. Well, but we could say the quorum could be three members if we wanted to. Oh, okay. I mean, if, if the quorum could be any number. We're oh, okay. you know safest if we try and get at least half the half the membership to be a, a quorum number, but you know, we can set the quorum number to be whatever we want. I'd or, have to check on that. That might, it might, I think it's dictated by the number of actual please. seats you have. Oh uh, yeah. You know, I, I forgot that there's a, a party membership and other considerations. Minority yeah, representation, other, all that good stuff. Yeah. yeah. So we, we may need to meet, is it, it might be 60%. I think for a quorum it's, it's more than fit. I think it's six. Yeah. Two thirds, maybe yeah. of the check. There's a whole. Right. Chart so there, it. there's a consideration for not having a larger group, but again, to Melissa's point, our attendance is usually very good. So, um, do we want to propose 10 and yeah, uh, or nine? Uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I don't have a strong feeling for either. I just, like I said, I know we have Matt who's, been attending our meetings, interested in being involved, 
um, and waiting on the wings for an approval from the Board of Selectmen to become a ninth member. So nine is the lowest number for me. 10, 10, 10 seems, you know, we've had as many as 11. I think nine or 10. That's what I thought. So, and I don't know what's better, the nine or the 10. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, from a quorum perspective, um, you know, I think, I think we'll have an easier time getting five members there than six. So, um, what about a provision for alternates? I the think reason I say that is because with the people in the wings, can they still, would that still let them come? If there's no, but they, they're welcome, right? Our meetings yeah. are public, yeah. right? Technically, yeah. this yeah. is on air right now. So, you know, anybody is welcome at any time. And Matt technically has been coming as a, as a you know, a public citizen uh, because he's not seated technically. So. It's just the voting members. That's right. Right. So I, I would say let's, let's just go with nine. Yeah, I agree. Nine sounds good. Nine's a good number. Is that going to keep Matt off right now, though? I think we're at eight right now. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So yeah, then I think your quorum is five, but I'll double check on that. Yep. Yeah, we're we're currently at eight members. So Matt would be our ninth member. Cool. Three, four, five. I'm sorry, we're at seven. Matt would be our eighth member. I would still keep it at nine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nine's a good number. It also uh no tie votes that way. Yeah. I'm just checking something. I don't know why I thought you guys had eight right now. I counted Matt as my eight in my first count. And then when I, because okay. he's in my spreadsheet, my <clears throat> member's spreadsheet. Um, give me one thing. Um, Bill, Evan, Harold, John, Liz, Mike, Paul Kelly, and Ray. That's eight. Carol. Yep. I had him up in my uh, town staff. I don't think he's town staff. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you, you would have one seat that you could then fill with um, Matt, who I haven't met yet. But Okay. So, 3B. Um, you know, how does everybody else feel about potentially specifying um, roles and qualifications for, for membership? I think it makes it too complicated. I don't think it's needed, my opinion. Does this leave it open to non-residents? No. Rep okay. Represented the community mean residents, means residents? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I also agree. I think it adds complexity. And I think when we are looking for volunteers, um, anybody that's passionate about technology generally is going to be a pretty solid addition. Um, and the personnel committee has done done well by us in, in building our membership when we needed to. Um, so I, I think leaving that open. Um, Liz's point you that large. you should say residents of Simsbury. Do that. Yeah, I think it's just assumed, but yeah. And IT is always evolving, right? So if you keep it more general like that, then without specific slots, then you can adapt as you need to. Right. Melissa, do you want to change representatives to residents? Okay. Do we need to talk about um, any of the governance stuff like Robert's rules? And I noticed that in some of the other. 
Yeah. So the only thing I did include was about just complying with F, um, for freedom of information in terms of filing agendas and minutes and all that good stuff. Um, it's up to you. I think, you know, we had this conversation with another group. It was one of the land use bodies that's looking at their, their bylaws. Um, might've been zoning actually, Mike, but um, talking about whether Robert's rules has to be referenced. And I think we decided it doesn't necessarily have to, um, but it's up to you. Um, I, I don't see a, I don't see a big need for it. I mean, it, from the outside looking in, it just, yes. it, uh, it would show how we're, you know, kind of running the ship. Um, Can you say but, parliamentary procedure? Would that be different? I don't know how that differs from Robert's rules. I don't know. I didn't either. I just trying to think. Yeah. But there's, there's more than one type of rules of order, though. There's Robert's and there's another one. I'm forgetting the name of it. Um, but I thought they both fell under parliamentary procedure, so I don't know. Mm. Um, my poli sci degree is useless, isn't it? <laughs> I can look it up, I'm sure. <laughs> Yeah, I was just trying to peruse the spirit draft real quick. Mm -hmm. see what what they uh, anybody yeah, else have any? The, Sorry, Ray. One of those examples did reference Robert's rules. I don't remember which one. I think it might have been spirit. Yeah, Q in uh, section four, the council shall follow Robert's rules of order and may establish additional rules and or procedures to govern the conduct of meetings and review those rules and procedures on an annual basis. All, all FOIA rules and regulations will be adhered to. So we already have the all FOIA. Anybody uh, have a strong feeling for adding something to the effect that says that we're going to follow Robert's rules and and also do we want to look at that do we do we want to be uh you know we put it down and, and and then we're going to have to follow it we already do but also if we're going to be reviewing this on an annual basis then that's something that has to be on our agenda annually also so if we put something like that down and all of a sudden that's something that we have to adhere to i think it's best left out me too Yeah, I, I don't have a strong um, strong opinion either way. Like I said, the only the only thing that I the only reason why I would consider it would be from the outside looking in to try and figure out how our show role and you know how how we accomplish what we accomplish. But they're all uh, right now they're all on TV, so anybody can just watch that and figure it out. But that's not always the way. Hopefully that it, this ends soon. Can't wait to actually do some in person stuff. Um, all right, so. Was there anything else in uh, in section three, composition and voting, that anybody had any strong opinions on? Not I. I just didn't understand E. So that there's a liaison that's different than the um... Yeah, so that's Wendy right now. So yeah. um yeah, like I like I said, when the when a new board um when their term starts, each board member is appointed to serve as a liaison to each of all of our many boards and commissions. So this would be that person who's um, designated as your your liaison. So she, you know, she participates in the meeting, but like staff, she can't obviously vote. Um, she's there just as a liaison for the board of selectmen. Yeah, I think I read something. I thought I was. I think I thought I read something that it was deputy. Board of select de deputy selectmen. And I thought it was two different things, but it just yeah, I get it. That's Wendy. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. There's nothing glaring at me as missing in the composition and voting. Um, 
Okay. And it, it accurately represents us now. So I think we can move on to the organization. You get three staff members. <laughs> I'll let Jason know he's in this. I had a thought that item C under section four organization because it deals with meeting schedules should be moved under section five. Oh yeah, that I think it's a picky little nit. No, I it's redundant. I had it in there twice actually. Yeah. Yep, good catch. Oh yeah, I see it's under item B. Okay. Yeah. So um you know Melissa has a a spike out here asking, you know, do we go to a semi or a bi-monthly uh, schedule with work group meetings in between. Um, I like the way it's stated now because it gives us a lot of flexibility, but I think we might want to include something about uh, subgroup meetings, uh, something like sub subgroup meetings may be organized as the need arises and conducted however we want to say they're conducted well they're, they're generally on an as-needed basis um, anybody else have I mean that that's a really good point Ray um, anybody else have any strong opinions about whether or not we should be every other month or once a month or I think the once a month, you know, uh, personally, I think it, it works well for us. You know, obviously we, uh, we leave some time in the summer on the schedule in case we need it and usually end up canceling it because there's not a lot going on or vice versa. We, to raise point, we add other meetings like this in so that we can accomplish some work in between the meetings. Um, you know, I think, uh, once a month isn't a big ask for our volunteers. Um, and, it's a, it's a duration of time that gives us enough time to get done whatever needs to get done, but not stay, not get disconnected from what's happening in the, you know, with the town's technology and uh, the projects that Rick's got going on. I think once a month is, is appropriate too. I agree. You want me to add language about, um, you know, meeting meetings of subgroups or working groups as necessary, um, or is that? You know, it, it's again, it, it's from the outside looking in. It gives folks the idea that you know we don't just meet once a month. Sometimes it is more often than that. So probably not a bad thing to add a little word there, Melissa. Okay. What do you think? Are we report? Work. Go ahead. Are we required to meet in person and we're not doing it now because of the pandemic or is that something that's an option even if there isn't a pandemic? We have, um, we have done call-ins, right? So folks, members that uh, uh, weren't physically available to come to our meetings uh, should, were able to call in and in? Pass. Should that be put under meetings, some sort of virtual option? Well, that, that's um, something that's allowable. I mean, that's allowable by, you know, in, in, in olden times when you could meet in person, um, joining by phone was always an option legally. So I don't, it's okay. under the freedom of information. I think you're allowed to have virtual participation. Yeah. Uh, I would, and ADA and, and a bunch of different other um, guiding documents. <clears throat> I'll finagle some language later. Thank you. Anything else in uh, section five?
boring technical stuff. Mike, I, I had a thought on section six reports that perhaps we should um, require it of ourselves to make special reports on special decisions that have been made um, just to keep us honest and make sure the stuff is documented. For example, what we decided, um, and I mean, I'm not going to be unhappy if everybody says it's a dumb idea, but when we helped Rick with the, the last project, you know, maybe we should have issued a one paragraph written recommendation. So he's got something to say, hey, here's what the technology task force recommended and, and I'm following it. It'd just, just be a sentence uh, saying something to the effect that uh, from time to time special projects may um, not require, may, may, I can't think of the word I'm looking for, but may warrant having a, a special report based on the results of the of the project. Something like that. I don't know if you'd need to spell that out, though. I think we could just do that as necessary. Well, that's true, too, John. You know, yeah, I, I, I agree with you both. I think that that is actually something that we should incorporate into, you know, our, our inner workings. Um, I would go to spiking that out here as, as a specific uh, uh, rules of procedure. You know, that, that's kind of getting into the weeds, kind of like the whole Robert's rule for, uh, for 5D, right? We didn't, we didn't spell that out because we didn't want to have to review it on an annual basis and have to have that as one of our agenda items, knocking something potentially more important off the agenda on a regular basis. Um, but I'll, yeah, I'll go with I, that. Do, I do agree with you, Ray, that we should be, uh, you know, when we're making decisions like that, you know, technically that stuff is generally reflected in our minutes because a lot of times we'll take, take those actions to a vote, um, you know, and, and so technically they're in our, you know, they're in our, uh, our documentation, but, uh, you know, having a blurb, sending on Rick a blurb, with those decisions too is probably a good thing. So that's a really good point. Yeah, I like that. That way there's something in writing from you all in terms of not only the work you've done, but what where you landed in terms of recommendations. I think that's a good thing right. to do. Right, and, and it gives Wendy something to reference when she's reporting back to the Board of Selectmen on a, on a, on a regular basis. Um, and it also gives us a template to start our June 30 report on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, 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 it probably will make pulling together something on June 30 or on or before June 30 every year um, a lot easier if we have those done throughout the year. So we can have a handshake agreement. Absolutely. Yeah, and so I put June 30th in here. I, I don't know, I think it's important. This doesn't have to be anything fancy. I mean, you guys can just do like a one page write up or if you wanna you know, do a presentation to the board, that's, that's fine too. I mean, it can take any form, but I think it's just probably a good thing to do annually. Um, and it also gives them an opportunity to give feedback in terms of if there's anything they want us looking at. Um, but I had proposed June 30th just because you know, if there are big projects, IT projects for the year, that would coincide with the fiscal year. Um, but up, up to you all, whatever you think um, makes the most sense. Makes sense to me. Rick, where would you say that date lands with, um, you know, usually with your kind of project life cycle? You know, is that <laughs> Is that the beginning of a crazy time? Is that the... Uh... Well, it's the end of a crazy time. Um, well, the end of the budget cycle. <laughs> yeah, usually we start talking about things like that that are going to hit us, that impact us, you know, December, um, November, December, into March. 
And then, you know, I think that data will work. Um, we'll know what's going to be for the next, for the current year, and then as well as for the previous or for the next two or three years, if we put money out there. So that could be in that report. Um, so, yeah, that I think that June thirtieth would work. Um, we'll definitely give the report a little bit more uh, meat on the bone, because um, then we could always, like I said, forecast out you know two, three, four years. Right. Which is in a which is a lifetime in technology. Um, yeah. Now, how does this date coincide with our election in November? Um, <laughs> not the pending thing that, you know, is happening in what, like 10 days or something like that. Um, you know, we, we honor before November 30th of every year, we'll elect, uh, members to be chair and vice chair. Um, you know, and, you know, uh, at some point during the year, we also try to take a peek and, and plan for what we're going to try and accomplish for the year. Um, you know, I, I feel like we were doing that at the turn of the year um, in, in years past. Um, so we would be six months into that cycle at that point if we had, you know, come up with a plan for what we were trying to accomplish on January 1st. Um, you know, do we, do we try, to, try to rearrange that so that, uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're at the end of that cycle? Um, on or around June 30th? I guess that was my thought is that both, you know, the report out of, of what you've done and then also I, also um, what you're setting out to do. I guess I was thinking the June 30th, July 1st break in terms of the fiscal year because that would be when funding would be coming available for, for Rick's budget. But again, if, if it makes more sense to set priorities um, for January, then I would say probably reporting out, you know, in December would make more sense if, if you know what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. I just, if, you know, if we're going to start loading, um, you know, some, some, some serious member workload in that time frame, you know, that's usually when our attendance is least, <laughs> you know, right around that time is when everybody starts disappearing from uh, the very lovely town of Sinsbury and, mm -hmm. And exploring other parts of our beautiful country. Mm -hmm. um, when travel's allowed again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it's happening. It's going to happen soon. Yeah. Um, we could look at the end of the summer if that's just practically makes more sense. Um, or, or give it thought and we can talk to the full group about it at our you know, when we present this to them on, on, if you don't have a recommendation for today, but. Yeah, I, I, I'm almost inclined to have it. I, I think that a December meeting would make more sense, you know, just based on how we've done it in the past. Um, you know, we'll have just done an election of a chair uh, in a vice chair, so we can report that as, hey, here are your new, you know, here's the new leadership of the of the group, um, and here's what we've accomplished for the past 12 months. We will be working on, you know, what is coming forward in the coming months, and we'll, we can share that with you once it's done, obviously through, you know, some type of letter or through Wendy. Um, and then report again back in October, November, or something along those lines. What the, are the meeting schedules that time of year? Pretty brutal for the board of selectmen. Oh, um, not any, not anymore. So I mean, it's it just depends on what's going on. Um, right. I don't think that would be a bad time. I know um, ED, Economic Development Commission. They their report out is by the end of October. Um, so it really. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I kind of like that thought too um, on the calendar year, because like you said, your appointments take place December. So when you have a new 
newly appointed committee, that's technically the start of your term. So it, that, that does make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, so December, January, uh, and we're active then, right? I mean, yeah. the summer, the summer things get a little, little dicey sometimes. Um, we're definitely, our, our attendance is much stronger and we're rolling through projects um, that time of year, so. What do you think of November 30th? That way you don't get stuck, because usually the board is, now that you mention it, the board usually has one meeting in December, so that might be a little more difficult. Right. So if we say by the end of November, then that way. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have done an election by then. Um, right. Um, and, you know, we'll have almost a year's worth of experience of whatever we were trying to accomplish by then. Mm -hmm. Of course, that means if we get this adopted before then, that we'll have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> we can start this next year. <laughs> Your first report. Well, actually, this will work out nicely because this document will go to the board at one of their November meetings. So that'll be a nice kind of... A, a starting point for it, if you yeah, will. Yeah, yeah. So they can consider this and um, sort of set the stage and then, yeah, right, like a starting point for moving forward. So it makes sense. Are we all meeting on um, November 2nd? We do have a regular meeting um, on the calendar for the 2nd. Because this has to be approved there, right, before it can go to the Board of Selectmen? we need to do that? Yeah, I was thinking you'd probably want to take it to your full group, right? And have them endorse it or have a look and make sure everyone's comfortable with it. It's up yeah. to you guys, but yeah. Now, um, if we wanted to get this, well, no, I think November 2nd would be fine because by then that gives you, Melissa, time to get it on the agenda, to get approved sometime in November or December at that one meeting in December. Um, and then we have our rules of procedure going forward. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can definitely get this on the board meets November 9th. I don't see why we couldn't get it on for November 9th. So. Okay. Cool. All right. So, uh, anybody else have any strong feelings about, uh, uh, number six? All right. Number seven cruising right along. Um, and 45 minutes in, so I'm trying to be sensitive to that. Thank you. Um, I think one uh, uh, seven A is is pretty fair. Um, That's typical. Um, yeah, and this, I mean, this isn't entirely necessary. I mean, we've included it in more recent ones we've done, I think, because there have been instances where there have been issues. This group isn't particularly controversial. So I don't think, you know, there's obviously we don't have a huge concern. So this is just something that we had, I had pulled from the other ones. So it's, um, it's your, it's whatever you would recommend. But um, I do think the first one probably is a good thing to have just in case we get a, a member who isn't active. Um, yeah, I, I agree. With taking that. up a seat. Yeah. Yep. Um, all right. So it sounds like we're all in agreement with 7A. 7B. Um, I'm good with that. I think you need to leave the, the Board of Selectmen an out. If I, I can't think of what cause would be for someone on, on this task force, but I'm sure there have been other instances and other commissions or task forces where there have been, uh, let's say, conflict of interest or some such thing that would um, jeopardize the town's position. So I think you need to protect the, the BOS. And it gives them a vehicle and technically us a vehicle through the town manager, which, you know, I think is, 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 is smart. Yeah, I think it should stay too. And ultimately, you know, it's the board's decision, the board of selectmen's decision, and and I like that it has a vehicle for um, the public meeting for you know the member that if if the member did choose to want to want to have you know his or her say, um, there's an opportunity there for that. 
Mm -hmm. So I, I like that as it is. Yeah, and that last one is just saying we won't spend money that we don't haven't has not been appropriated to us. So just another technical piece that we're included in other documents like this. So yeah, that makes sense. We just spend Rick's money. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Happily, we might add. <laughs> is there uh, is there anything missing section wise? Right, we have eight sections here. Um, you know, it it, uh, it covers a lot of ground. Did anybody when reviewing this? Did anybody think of anything that is is missing? I think it looks good. Yeah, I, I couldn't think of anything either. I like it. Cool. Good. Well, I will, um, I'll just clean up this section here and then I'll send it back out and then we'll have a for discussion on the second. Yeah. You know, is this, uh, is, does this go out to the, the subgroup the second time or do we just send it to the members at large for feedback? so that we could have uh, uh, generally a quick discussion on the second and not have to spend a lot of time reviewing it as we have done here for, for almost 50 minutes. I would say just send it to the large group. Okay. I agree with that. Ray, you comfortable with that? Liz, yep. you comfortable with that? Yep. Cool. All right, thank you. Nice work. Melissa, thanks for helping. Oh, of course. Thank you. This was, this was very productive. I think we're in good shape. Cool. Thanks Thank so you all. Thank you. See you guys.